Hello, welcome back to the channel, and let's finally cover uh, how we're writing SQL queries with Honey uh, SQL library in Clojure. So, uh, the library itself uh, is pretty simple. Uh, the idea that we will use uh, the Clojure maps uh, and keywords uh, to uh, write uh, SQL queries, and these Clojure maps will be basically a DSL uh, for the SQL queries. So as you see in the example, uh, we have a um, SQL map and we have uh, keys that define like common keywords uh, that you expect in your SQL query, like select, and then we have a list of fields. We can say from, and we have table names, and then we have where, and we have different conditions there, like equals. We also can uh, extend it. Um, basically, all uh, default uh, SQL operators are available in some way. If we go to and we search for big example, um, we can have we can see these two uh, variants. So um, let's take a look here. So we have select distinct uh, from, we have uh, option to specify join, left join, right join, as we already see in the where condition, and also group by, having, ordered by, limit, offset, and also it's not here, but you can uh, uh, specify returning if uh, your database supports that and all that stuff. So uh, it's pretty powerful. And uh, as you can see, there are two options. Uh, one is called like a pure DSL. So uh, we don't use any functions or helpers from the library. We just uh, define our query with a closure map. Uh, and uh, after that, we just run uh, this uh, slash format function from the Honey SQL library. That's the first option. The second one is to use uh, helper functions that are available inside the library. Uh, I don't really like that approach personally, but I believe that uh, um, matter of taste. So if you feel this is better, you definitely can use that. But um, I tried both, and when I stick to pure DSL like this, uh, to me it's much easier to combine the query and write it, and also I can use um, closure functions to work with the data structure to transform it somehow. Maybe I want like uh, uh, optional uh, condition in the where or or something similar. So uh, I, j I just feel it's much easier to to use a uh, plain uh, pure DSL like that. First um, part of that will be just a string with our query, like a plain text. And after that, we have uh, multiple uh, elements in this vector that will represent our um, parameters. So, for example, these bars will be placed where this uh, uh, question mark. Uh, and basically, this format is what NextJDBC or Clojure JDBC library expects. So, this library, uh, Honey SQL, I mean, is uh, kind of like a pure library that the only purpose is to uh, convert our DSL for SQL queries into this uh, GDBC-friendly format, so we can put it in, uh, execute it with uh, Closure GDBC library. Cool. Uh, let's jump into the editor, and we will uh, basically continue with our real-world Closure API uh, uh, project. And uh, what I've done, basically just added this uh, dependency here, uh, re uh, most recent version. And if we go to our migrations test, which uh, is in persistence uh, test folder, we have a couple tests here, to, and we were using just uh, plain strings to write our queries. Uh, like inserts and selects, so pretty simple. But anyway, uh, this uh, doesn't look good. And uh, if I have something more complex, um, working with plain strings will be just uh, not really convenient. So let's uh, take this test as an example and rewrite it into Honey SQL. Um, I'll just grab this namespace and uh, replace a duplicate honey sql test something like that add and let's rename the import 
Cool. Let's try if it's working. Yeah, so our test is passing. Now we want to require our honey SQL um, as SQL, for example. And let's take a look what we can do with that. So this is the most simple query possible. Just select star from, from a table. And uh, let's say we want to use honey SQL here. So let's compare it with an empty string. And then we can do uh, SQL format. And here we create our DSL uh, with uh, which honey SQL will co convert for us. So we, we say uh, select uh, star uh, from schema versions, right? And let's, let's execute that. And you can see uh, that it's converted into array like that. So you can use uh, this uh, kebab case uh, keys for the table uh, table names and uh, column names. Uh, it will automatically convert it into low case. So let's put our assertion here. Let's rerun that. Yeah, now it's passing. And now let's move it uh, here. Let's say select uh, query and we move this here and we now just will use this query right here and it should still pass wait a sec uh, schema ah, schema version sorry not, not plural like that uh, schema version. Let's run again. Uh, select query. Cool. So now we have passing test, right? Uh, moving next, uh, we have our to do table test. And uh, here we have insert. So we can do that as well. Uh, let's call it insert query and we can do insert into uh, table name to do values um, so it will be let me quickly check insert into um, yeah, so we want columns and values like that. Let's copy this thing. So it will be uh, to do, which is uh, our table name in this case. And uh, we want to insert title field and we want these two strings. So first will be my to do list, second one is other to do list. And let's clean up Put on it there. right um, and as usual we want a format after that and let's compare the query so we have this insert query let's compare it to string and as you can see, we now have this array. Uh, we now have these placeholders where we want to uh, put our values. So if we put it here, and run again, this is passing. And now we can replace this block with our insert, insert query. Cool. Um, Let's see what we have inside our insert results now. Yeah, so 
we forgot to add a statement to return what we inserted. So it will be returning um, star. Right. Let's run again. Now this is not correct because this query changed. Just can copy it from here. Put it here. So now you see this uh, additional statement at the end. Let's rerun. And actually, these two items now return from our insert query. Let's remove it here. And same uh, simple query to select here. So we can just um, inline it, I believe, uh, here. So we want select. Um, for all, uh, select star from to do and that's it and don't forget to run SQL format in the end let's run yeah cool so now we have all tests passing Let's just play a bit uh, with different options uh, to understand better how we uh, define queries with uh, HoneySQL. So we want something to start from. So let's say we want select uh, uh, field A from uh, table one, where, and here we can write conditions. So uh, usually it's a keyword here, so like it will be equal, uh, but we need to put um, it in this form, so it's a, like a closure keyword. And now we can say something like uh, field A equals to 1 or something. And if we run SQL format, let's ex ex execute that, so we have this in the REPL. So we have select A from table 1 where A equals question mark and this question mark will be the first argument uh, from the rest of the list so one if we put uh, just table table one here um, it will be from one, uh, this table right if we add uh, multiple things here it will be uh, other table names uh, table two for example uh, we run and now we have uh, this uh, full join uh, of these uh, two tables so it's like from table one table two if we want to add uh, names to the tables we want to nest once again so we wrap this and say t1 and if we want name here we can say uh, t2 run again and now we we have this correctly so like table one as t1 table two as t2 uh, if we want to add conditions uh, we can do, uh, we can join, uh, we can have multiple conditions with or or and, and it will be something like and, and we have multiple vectors here. So first one, we keep this condition, but also we want, for example, that uh, um, like T1 ID uh, equals uh, T2 ID. If we run that, we see that now we have where, and we have this first condition and second condition uh, joined with end, and we can nest that how we want. So let's say we want uh, or inside here. So let's say we have or, and one of the conditions will be this. So let's say it's T1A, and um, or for example, um, not equal it will be like this uh, t2 b some string or something so yeah we now have pretty complex uh query here right and um again th this is not valid when we name uh, tables like that. So uh, we can do um, T1A, um, and we want a vector now here, right? So like that, T1A, T2, 
star, for example. So in that case, we want just uh, column A from first table and all columns from uh, second table. Let's see. Yeah, you see, it's it's kind of, kind of powerful. Um, if we nest once again, we can name it uh, T1A, for example. So now we have this bit. Uh, so we select T1A as, and we name it in the output result set. And uh, if we want to write uh, to run uh, a function like mean, max, or count on top of that, um, inside here, so it will be count like that. And if we remove one le level, so yeah, it is count uh, t1a as uh, this. So it's three levels uh, deep. And at this point, it becomes a bit annoying, but um, it's still not that bad, to be honest. Um, there is a shortcut for functions. So we, if we go to functions, um, yeah, it's possible to use things like that. I really, I really hate this uh, notation, so I don't really use that. But if you don't mind, this is the option to avoid a bit of nesting. Uh, in this pure DSL. Cool. Um, I guess you you got a, the idea. Um, if we remove this one, and the final thing for today is uh, let's use our uh, HTTP API for so in the pedestal component we have this uh, um, request uh, the endpoint uh, that's currently using um, in memory store but uh, let's rewrite it to uh, get uh, to do item uh, to do list from the database and we'll use uh, honey sequel to uh, to write the query so let's prefix it with db uh, so we don't have collisions and let's name it uh, db get to do handler this will be db get to do uh, if we go to our handler here we can copy this name it db handler here as well uh, so now from dependencies uh, we can get our data source data source from dependencies and we want to do id it will come at the pass params and we can get it from here. So it will be request path prompts to do ID. And we want to parse, uh, parse UID. Uh, where is the request? Um, yeah, it will be context request. Yep, cool. Uh, don't need this. And for the to do, we want now to uh, gdbc execute one. Uh, because we getting it by primary key, we expect one or zero um, uh, rows returned. So it's uh, uh, better to use execute one because in that case we'll have just a map. If we just run execute, will be a vector of uh, rows, and we have to run uh, ha have to call first on top of that. It's not really convenient. So we have this and uh, this data source. We need to execute that to get the connection. And after that, we have our query. So it will be select uh, star uh, from to do where equals to do ID. And it's equal to this to do ID here, right? And we run a SQL format, the end, right? Cool. And uh, regarding our test, if we go to API test, we can copy it. And let's say we have a DB to do, or let's just say to do API test, add 
to do API test. Then we don't need this greeting test, we don't need this one. And I guess we'll just focus on this uh, get to do test. Uh, we need to add a bit more here because we don't have database uh, in the test system now, in the test environment. So if we go to uh, our info, info handler, I believe we had it here. Yeah, so we need this database container. So now we put it here and the let. Close this. So like that, um, and we want to start our container first. So we run try uh, start dot start database container, and at the end we have the finally block, and we call close close database container that. Oh no, sorry, it's stop, not close. Stop. And we want to add this database spec inside our uh, configuration. Where is our system? Yeah, right here. Something like that. Uh, so we'll get uh, database connection information from our container. We need to import that. Cool. And here we were initializing our state atom. Uh, so basically the test is we know to do ID that exists in the database and we want to call our API uh, and it will be now DB uh, get to do. Uh, and we want to uh, get back the to do item. Uh, and then we run this on some random to do item uh, and we should return uh, should should get back the 404 um, but now instead of doing this reset uh, we want to actually uh, create uh, the to do item in the database so we can do it like uh, to do and it will be gdbc um, execute we want to get our data source from our system under test data source uh, system under test so now we can call this data source and we want to insert into to do I always forget what it was. Uh, Sort into uh, columns. Yeah, let me just copy this again. So insert into uh, to do columns title, and the title will be this. Just one row and we run SQL format. Let's see what we get. Is it correctly inserted into the database? Let's run. Yeah, as usual, forgot to add um, returning star once again. Okay. Yeah, and um, if you see this, uh, it basically um, has this uh, namespaced keywords with a table name as the namespace which is usually not um, really easy to work with. And also you can see this underscores here. Uh, I just prefer 
keys to have a kebab uh, format but luckily we can do that if we configure our gdbc execute and i think it will be something like we provide a builder build their friend here and it will be rs uh, kebab unqualified kebab maps here let's do again there are different options if you uh, want different formats so we have just lower maps which will have underscores but it will be unqualified uh, and other uh, and other options as well so now if we check it here we see that we have um, we don't have this namespace anymore and we have our keys nicely formatted that's good and one more uh, will be just to have execute one because we're inserting one value right so that's it so we have to do insert it and now we can actually destructure it here so we can say keys and it will be to do id and uh, it will be uh, title right to remove it here and add our assertion yeah let's try this again okay here we go no exception but it's still not happy uh, so we, we're getting 404 and let's go here and if we um, let's print this uh, to do ID or maybe like path params or something print learn Okay, so we're getting this to do. Ah, sorry. Yeah, it's in the test. So we need to clean up. Uh, we created these to do's here, but we don't use them anymore. So if we remove them and we just now want to do ID uh, from here, right? And yeah, let's try that. Uh, this to do ID. Shouldn't be to do ID really, but we will refact that in a sec. Okay, cool. So now we have this to do back. Um, you see, we still get this uh, namespaced uh, keywords because we want to do the same configuration inside our uh, code here. So now this works, but we want to add this option right here. Let's run it again. Okay, so now we have in the body this uh, to-do item. Uh, that's good. Uh, usually for the assertions, uh, we can do something like, let's say we have this response here, and we just grab this request, uh, put it inside the let, and now we can uh, do status and body here. Uh, keys, sorry, yeah, status body, and one of the assertions will be that status is 200, and second one, um, so the created that is actually random, so we can do something like sum um, created at uh, from body, and here we want um, to do ID, to do ID, and uh, title, title, and want to compare it to select keys from body, and we want to do ID and title. Let's run that. And yeah, as we uh, using JSON, it's not keeping the information that this is your id so the easiest way will be just to wrap this into a string and that should be a passing test now cool and also as you can see this 404 works correctly because here if we if this is not uh 
is this is not found we have this if and if it's not uh, if it's nil it will re respond like a not found uh, response back to the API so yeah that's um, the idea uh, kind of how we use uh, honey SQL uh, pretty simple and nice library uh, I think in the next video we'll uh, write a new API but we'll use uh, hack SQL and we also will discuss uh, differences between the libraries and what is the use case for the Honey SQL, what is the use case for the Hack SQL. Uh, but yeah, uh, that will be in the next video. Cool. Thanks a lot for uh, for watching. Thanks a lot for the support in the channel. Um, I'm getting a lot of uh, comments and likes, and uh, hope the content is useful. And uh, think uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.